Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. You can find information about me and other information about my work uh, at these um, websites that I'm giving you here. Please note that I'm using a redirect service, smarturl.it, and then after a forward slash you put in the word and then it redirects you to what this word suggests. So if you want to find out how to pass actuarial exams, find my advice. Go to smarturl.it forward slash pass. Well, if you want to go to my YouTube channel, go to smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here's a problem for exam MFE. This is study note MFE-03-17, problem number 39. A discrete time model is used to model both the price of a uh, non-dividend paying stock and the short-term risk-free interest rate. Each period is one year. At time zero, the stock price is 100 and the effective annual interest rate is 5%. Notice this is the effective annual interest rate, it's not the force of interest. At time one, there are only two states of the world denoted by U and D. The stock prices are S sub U equal to 110 and S sub D equal to 95. The effective annual interest rates are uh, then, at time 1, RU equal to 6% and RD equal to 4%. So, so these are prices, um, interest rates in two states of the world and these are again effective annual interest rates. Let C of K be the price of a two-year K-strike European call option on the stock, let P of K be the price of a two-year K-strike European put option on the stock. Determine P of 108 minus C of 108. And my first impression looking at this is that this difference of price of put and, and call and they're European is the opposite of what we normally have in the way I memorize put call parity because I remember put call parity as call minus put equals the price of the underlying without the dividends that are paid during the option existence. But anyway, the underlying minus present value of exercise price. And um, for me, that's the easiest way to remember. It's something like if you buy a call and sell a put, that's like buying the stock with borrowed money stock minus present value of exercise price. Now, there are some, um, I need to be careful to, for this to be exactly true, there have to be some conditions memorized, but um, the point is to memorize the formula in some way. So if it helps you remember the formula, this is how I remember it. Call minus put equals stock minus present value of exercise price, exercise price because Call minus put is like buying the stock with borrowed money. Which, by the way, call minus put is also the same thing as a forward contract for the same time as the call and put are. Um, and uh, you can replicate a forward uh, by buying a stock with borrowed money. The important thing to note is that the options are for two years while we are given binomial model for the first period but not for the second period. So we can't assume it for the second period. We don't really know what's going to happen there. On the other hand, this difference, put price minus call price, as I told you already, it suggests in my mind put call parity. Uh, well, by put call parity, it must be equal to uh, present value of exercise price minus uh, the current stock price without any dividends paid during the first two years. But the stock doesn't pay any dividends anyway. So uh, we must have this difference equal to um, present value of exercise price, which is 108. And then if we're multiplied by a price of a zero coupon bond maturing in two years at the risk-free rates, and it's a $1 zero coupon bond, then that's the present value. Minus 100, the present uh, current stock price. So we need to find the price of that zero coupon bond. On the other hand, if we look at it this way, that it's a payment of one in two years, and if we want to calculate its present value now, then uh, at time one, 
if we're in the up state, it will be 1 over 1 plus ru. And if we're in the down state, it'll be 1 over 1 plus rd. And when, then we can discount these prices using risk neutral probability to time 0. And that's going to be the price at time 0. So that's precisely what this formula says. But we can find P star by noting that the current stock price must be the expected present value under risk neutral probabilities of its payoffs at time 1. So it must be that 100 is equal to 110 in the upstate discounted at 5% times the probability of the upstate P star plus um, 95, the, uh, the payoff, um, the value of a stock at in the down state times probability of the down state, which is 1 minus P star, discounted at 5% to, to time 0. And this is an equation in which the only unknown is P star. We solve it and get P star to be 2 thirds. And then we plug that in for the formula for the price of a zero coupon bond. And we get the price of a zero coupon bond. So then we plug that into the formula, which says that put minus call is present value of exercise price minus the stock price. We just plug in the present value factor, which is that price of a zero coupon bond, and we get the answer, negative 2.34, and that's answer B. Please remember this is copyrighted material, um, and please remember that any problems from Society of Actuaries or Casualty Actual Society are theirs, and they are reproduced with permission. And good luck with your studies, and good luck with the exam.